Hi. How many of you got exams this month? Oh, OK. <laughs> so being a pharmacist, I'm very well acquainted with exams. Our professors give us exam after exam after exam when I was at the faculty. And when we have an empty slot, they give us another exam. So we got acquainted with facts, studying, and living in our choices, the choices that we've been given by our professors, parents, and the community. When I graduated, I was thinking about my options in life. So they told me, you can work in a pharmacy, you're a pharmacist, or work in a pharma company. And I tried to work in a pharmacy, but it wasn't my thing. So after a couple of months, I tried to look at a position, an entry level, in any pharmaceutical company. And I can remember putting my CV in every pharmaceutical company and looking for a job. And after a couple of months, yeah, I got accepted in one of the pharmaceutical companies, a big multinational American pharmaceutical company. And for me, that was a very good start. My parents were very proud. My friends are very proud. Then, year after year, my colleagues, my managers, they told me, you need to be best achiever. You need to get your sales right, marketing right, so you get promoted. So I started to look at my career, at my current position. Do I really like what I'm doing currently? I found people actually quarreling, fighting. They would like to have the next move. I was actually competing with my friends, with my colleagues, with my managers, trying to be best achiever year after year. Then I started to realize something. And it actually hit me. We are living in a small room. When we are giving that option, in our industry, in our company, when you get graduated and you enter a company, you think that your life is inside this company. If you get out of this company, your life will be ruined. People are actually fighting. It's actually like a room. They're actually fighting inside the room. Everyone would like to sit on the chair, so he will be promoted. You will find even some people who are actually trying to put their hands on the back of the chair, right? even if they are not sitting. So it's a step closer. No one is actually approaching the door. No, no, get away from the door, right? If you get out of this company, if you get out from this career, it's the end of your life as you know it. But the thing is, if you open that door, by the way, it's not locked, you will find that life is full of opportunities. So when I get actually frustrated that I'm not doing what I want to do. I opened the door. I tried to know whether I got other opportunities. But I didn't quit, because most of these stories are actually, OK, and then when I quit, no. I started to submit my CV again, but as a freelance, I told many companies, I will work for free, I will work on weekends. So I submitted in trainings, in academia, in research, in marketing. And I tried many things. Many rooms were actually open. Then I got fascinated with the industry of research. So after a couple of months, I found an entry level in research. I submitted my CV and I got accepted. And I didn't mind that I was actually sitting with colleagues who are actually four and five years younger, fresh grads, but I was actually learning from them. So because this talk is not about my steps in this career, after years, I got promoted easily because I was actually passionate of what I'm doing, and I was a country manager of one of the Arab countries. And then the recession happened. And I started to think that, again, we are very limited in our options. If you remember in 2008, 2009, the economic recession in the GCC, and most of the industries got bankrupt, even our industry, the company I was working for. And we started to think, can we actually get out of this crisis? My management told me, we need, we need to lay off 50% of the employees. And one of our colleagues thought, what is the industry that actually managed to survive the recession? And we found many industries. One of them were FMCGs. And I remember one of our colleagues said, I was drinking water 
last night, and I found that this particular water, this particular brand, got less sodium content in it. We are all pharmacists and physicians, so we started to analyze what is the benefit of something like this. So we started to make a presentation. We went trying to get an appointment with this beverage company, the multinational big beverage company, and after a month, we managed to get this appointment, and we sat with the management, and my first thing I, to tell them was, do you know how much sodium you have in your water brand? And surprisingly, all of them said, no, why, shouldn't, why should we care? And we told them, do you know the benefit of having low sodium water as a beverage? And they said, I guess all beverages, all water are the same. And then we started our presentation, telling them about the health benefit, about how you can actually position you and make the marketing campaigns being less sodium content water. The objective of here is not the beverage itself or the sodium. The thing is, we try to inject a new science into another science. We injected the healthcare background and our healthcare power into the consumer industry. And we won a project, we won that project, and we managed to keep the company. And then I moved from a country to country, and the concept of integration was actually in my mind, and that's what I really want to enforce today. Integrating different things usually come up with brilliant ideas. We've been hearing a lot, even in the uh, last session with Mr. Samer about entrepreneurship. It begins with integration finding new ideas, how you can actually find new ideas, integrate different sciences. I remember one day, it's a very fast story. I moved from different regions, so I was a meeting in Milan, in Italy. And back then, I was working on what we call research coming from patients. So research can come from patients, from doctors, or from public authorities, or from economy and economists. So my big multinational got the three departments, patient research, doctor's research, and economic research. So I was sitting in this meeting, and we were presenting a proposal for a brief coming from this client about his crisis in business, and we told him, our solution for you is to make patients research. And I remember she told us, do you think there's any other option you can achieve my solution and, my, and to solve my crisis? using any different kind of research? And I said, definitely not. And she said, you know what? I send this brief to you and your colleagues in the economic research department in the same company you are working, and in the physician research department as well, which is the marketing research. And they told me exactly the same. They sent me another proposal saying that their solution is the only solution. So I end up with three solutions coming from the same company about the same crisis. And then it hit me again that the solution was not one of the three research types. It was integrating the economics and the research. So I started to study economics. I started to study economics and I found that economics got a big integration inside pharmaceutical science and pharmacoeconomics. So imagine any industry, they can produce money, right? You got products, you can put that I'm producing every year this amount of money. But what, uh, what about healthcare? What about Ministry of Health? They can actually say every year I uh, produced health with $1 billion. Can they say that? So pharmacoeconomics is putting monetary value over health. So can Ministry of Health say, we produced health with that amount of money? So to cut the long story short, that was new to the region, that was new to the Middle East and Africa. I started studying it, I started to integrate it, I opened my own company. Surprisingly, the people are fascinated with the integration concept. In no time, we've been working in 15 countries. And even I got calls from universities because they are trying to teach pharmacoeconomics to young undergrads, and they told me, can you come teach pharmacoeconomics, so please send us your PhD degree. And I said, I don't have a PhD degree. 
can you please send us your master's degree? I said, I don't have a master's degree. They said, OK, sorry. We are the second largest university in Egypt. We cannot hire you. And they closed the phone. Two days after, they called me. We couldn't find anyone else. And we keep hearing your name. We would like you as a professor for pharmacoeconomics. And this is not to encourage you not to pursue your postgrads, because I'm actually doing it currently. But the thing is, when you do integrate two different sciences, you got an edge over anyone else. If you are actually a teacher, study marketing. If you're actually in IT, try to study research. I know a lot of people started research integrated with IT. Physicians who are actually studying economics. Try to mix and match. We were talking about passion, how you can actually find your passion. It's through reading different sciences. If you are a graduate of communication, mass communication, if you're a graduate of business, read a lot about healthcare, read a lot about economics. Try to read in different sciences till you find that this particular science I can actually integrate into mine. And because people all the time are talking about micro specialization, you need to specialize in something, right? And then micro specialize, then you are unique. So it doesn't contradict with integration. Actually, integration is a micro specialization because if you look even back in history, you will find that it is an old concept but we are actually forgetting it. Look at Leonardo Vinci, who was an artist, right? But he got fascinated with mathematics. Even if you look at Mona Lisa painting, you will find that the golden rule of painting the Mona Lisa is coming from mathematics. If you look at a scientist called Ibn al-Haytham, he made and he founded the science of optics. And he was fascinated by astronomy and mathematics. So he integrated both. You will find a lot of scientists who are actually fascinated with their work using another science. So the main idea here, read a lot. Try to integrate different sciences together. Don't be locked in the room. People will try to tell you that this room is your life if you try to open the door, if you try to get out and seek other options you will get lost. Don't fight over the chair. Seek other options. Work a lot. Read about different sciences. Read about what you can actually do in life. And when you try different rooms, you can set your own room. Or you can get back to the room that you initially get out from, if you like it. But at least try other rooms. So. And the most important thing to close, don't, stuck, don't get stuck in the room waiting that all the circumstances will be perfect so I can get out. It won't. The main thing is don't wait for the perfect moment to begin. Begin and the moment will come. Thank you and remember, integration is a new specialization in life. Thank you.